What's up, Ego Hackers? Welcome to the C.S. Joseph Podcast. Today's question, how can an ENTP meet the FE inferior needs of an ISTP or an INTP? So, for context, very important context, uh, this particular question was asked by an ISTP female. So, just you know, to keep the, the context uh, where it should be in relation uh, to this particular um, episode. Context is king. Context absolutely matters. And oftentimes, expert intuition trickster. And even sometimes, expert sensing trickster. These two uh, expert tricksters leave out a lot of context. And that can often cause confusion. So... I'm here to make sure that there is no confusion whatsoever so that we could all learn uh, from this uh, particular episode today. Speaking of learning, if you want your questions answered by yours truly on our YouTube or on our podcast, become an Acolyte member, csjoseph.life forward slash members. Become a journeyman member, then upgrade your account to Acolyte. Or if you already are a journeyman member but not Acolyte, go to csjoseph.life forward slash portal and then sign up there. Just, uh, it says not a member, click that button, it'll take you to the page. Then you can upgrade your account from there. And then you get to send in your question, and I will turn it into a YouTube or a podcast episode. Just make sure that the questions are good, because if they're not good, they can be rejected, and we'll ask you to ask a different one, right? So that's, like, super important. <laughs> you might want to, you might want to do that. So yeah, extroverted feeling inferior is an extremely difficult thing to maintain within uh, a sexual relationship. Me being an ENTP, there's there's a ton there's a ton of struggle that I would face uh, in in an intrigue relationship, especially since I have introverted feeling trickster. And it's really hard for me to give an extroverted feeling inferior what it is looking for the most, which is validation. It wants to be liked, but knowingly liked, concretely liked, especially, you know, in the eyes of an ISTP woman. And also, also because uh, it's looking for acceptance. Now, while I internally can make the decision to accept the ISTP woman or the INTP woman, I can give her acceptance. It's not enough for me to say it. It's not enough for me to know it internally because they don't know it. And the thing is, is that even if I say words, to them, talk is cheap. To them, they want me to go a little bit further. They want me to go so much further they want me to back it up with concrete action, concrete proof. Because from their perspective, especially, you know, an ISTP woman being a Templar type, and you know how women often shit test men, uh, you know, just to, you know, to test their masculinity and see if they're like actually strong or whatever. It's kind of like um, loyalty checking, like from an ESTP to a point of view. ISTPs do the same thing. And one way that they check loyalty is to see is like, hey, are you actually making me a priority? It's not enough for an ENTP to just be like, hey, you know, yeah, you're a priority for me. Or, oh, yeah, I really like you. Or, oh, yeah, I really accept you. Oh, yeah, I'm putting you above others. It's not enough. The ENTP has to prove it with concrete action. And this is actually really, really hard to do because it doesn't even occur to most ENTPs. I mean, if they're unconscious developed, it has a higher chance of occurring to them mentally. But it usually just doesn't occur to them at all. And from their perspective, you know, especially ENTP men, it's just like, words are enough. You know, my word is my bond, you know, as they say. And, God, I hate that terminology. It's always funny how it's always ISFPs and ENTJs are always the ones that say, my word is my bond. And as soon as I hear that from them, it just causes me to trust them that much less.
way less. But the point is, is that how can you as an ENTP prove to your FE inferior woman, for example, that you are accepting, that you do like them, that you are prioritizing above other people? And it really comes down to how much special treatment that you show. It really comes down to how much special treatment you as the NTP are willing to give your ISTP woman. That's really what it comes down to. That, that's all it's all about. From their perspective, it's like level of investment, right? Level of investment is ultimately everything to them. But the thing is, it's like, how do they know how invested you are? You know? So they all do this thing, like their ESTJ unconscious side of their mind. They all do this thing where they're comparing themselves to other people. They're comparing you to other people, and they can't help that because of hypergamy. They're comparing you on their beta scale. They're comparing you on their alpha scale entirely at all times. It's all about comparison, and that's just how their hypergamy works up until the point that they're sexually active with you, and then their extroverted feeling inferior combined with their introverted intuition child lashes on to you because they've caught feelings, and they can't really let go. And honestly, they're not supposed to let go. It's actually a very good thing that they don't let go. This is kind of how, you know, when it comes to cheating, right? The cheating of hypergamy. And usually women cheat, you know, with alphas on beta men. But that's not to say that women don't cheat with beta men on alphas. It does happen. It can happen. That is a thing. But, um, you know, hypergamy ultimately can lead to cheating. That's one of the reasons why, you know, the neurotransmitters that come as a result of having uh, sexual relations with a woman, those neurotransmitters, those endorphins released uh, during sex actually end up creating uh, feelings of attachment. And so women almost always catch feelings before men do. And honestly, it's a huge turnoff if men catch feelings before women do. It's like a, it's like a major turnoff. And, uh, so, you know, just and if you're a man, you're listening to this, like, have faith that, you know, as you continue the sexual relationship with a woman, she'll eventually catch feelings. And then you basically got her at that moment. Uh, the ones that really take the longest to catch feelings, I would say, are introverted intuition pessimistics. But the introverted intuition optimistics, uh, especially when they're introverted intuition optimistic combined with extroverted feeling, uh, so basically INFJs and ISTPs, they definitely catch feelings probably the quickest, uh, contrary to uh, popular belief. That, that inner need for validation on the part of the ISTP or the inner need for intimacy on the part of the INFJ is just so heavy that they just can't live without it. And if you as their man become the source of validation or the source of intimacy in their lives, they're going to become attached. You know, and NI heroes especially have it hard because once they attach, they're attached basically forever and they will never let go. That's just how they are. Even if they try to burn down all the totems, everything that would possibly remind you of them in their life, they cannot escape it. That's why oftentimes they play hard to get. That's why oftentimes they try to like make you believe they're not catching feelings, even though they are, they know it's inevitable, they know it's coming. And as much as they try to keep their distance, they really just can't and they won't. Which honestly, that's okay. It's okay. It's kind of how God made us. You know, it's, it's fine. And it all goes back down to the book of Genesis. You know, the second curse given to Eve and ultimately to women. Your desire will be for your husband and he will rule over you. Which is basically one of the reasons why, after having sexual relations with a man, and if it's consistent, they're going to catch feelings. They're going to be attached. Especially if it's NI optimistic, and especially if it's NI optimistic combined with experted feeling. They just get attached. And they can't let go. So the thing is, is that while they have this high level of attachment and ultimately relationship investment that is inevitable, it's really important if you're an ENTP to keep track of how this is going because your FI trickster and your TI parent words aren't going to be good enough. If you cannot demonstrate on a consistent basis how you are giving your ISTP higher levels of special treatment above other people, and it's not just other women, it's literally other people in your life, you're going to have to do this on a regular basis. The problem is, though, is where it gets confusing. ENTPs, because of our risk of Stockholm Syndrome, we have this problem 
where we're not able to set up proper boundaries and enforce boundaries with people. It's a really big problem, right? So what ends up happening is that all of a sudden, you know, our ISTP woman is orbiting us in our life and in our frame. And then because we're constantly demonstrating that uh, special treatment with concrete action and proving to her that she's a higher priority than anyone else in our life at the same time, because that's what they're seeking the most, we end up orbiting them. We end up surrendering our frame to them. And naturally so, because we are a feminine type. ENTPs are feminine. It doesn't matter if they're a man or not. They are definitely still feminine. We're, we are still a feminine type. And that can be a huge problem. That can be a huge issue. So to deal with that, there are times when the ENTP is just going to have to pull away all of that special treatment and make sure that they're focusing on putting that special treatment on their own selves. What does this mean? This means that in a relationship with an ISTP woman, with Effie Inferior, yes, make her a higher priority over other people, other women, it doesn't matter. However, you cannot make her a higher priority than yourself. You have to consistently prove to yourself that you are still a higher priority than her. For example, if you're going to go to REI and buy something, buy something for yourself, don't buy something for her, right? If you're gonna buy something for somebody else who's not in your relationship, then I recommend considering the cost of what may happen to your relationship. Because eventually, the ISTP woman is just going to get jealous that you're giving time, attention, and resources to other people that she's not getting because she needs to feel like a higher priority than everyone else. She doesn't want to be top priority. She wants to be higher priority. And that's literally everything that you need to do in a relationship when it comes to their expert feeling inferior. They want to be liked. They want to be accepted. They want to be a higher priority, not the top priority, which oftentimes NTP men just automatically assume, especially ENTPs. Oh my God, Effie Child is such a curse. Oh, I can't, like, I, I, I struggle with it all the time. It's, it's so gross. It's such, a, it's such a burden of a function, at least to me, because my octogram is unconscious development, unconscious focus. So I'm very, very close to my superego, which means, like, I oftentimes have to feed my own expert feeling child to my superego in exchange for its power because of how trampled and honestly developmentally behind my expert feeling child is to the point where it's just caused me nothing but trouble in my entire life which which sucks it that honestly like truly actually sucks so based on that you really have to make sure that yes make her a higher priority but not the top priority make yourself the top priority so you as the man even though you're feminine still hold frame you still, like, she is in your life, you are not in hers. She orbits you, you do not orbit her. Because here's the thing. Most guys buy into the, oh, you need to make me a priority. Then they assume, because logical thinking, they assume that means make her the top priority. But as soon as they do that, she loses all respect for said guy and then ends up cheating on him with somebody else because her hypergamy just cannot handle it. Her hypergamy being her sexual strategy. If you want to learn more about hypergamy, Please dare to watch and listen to the season 31 uh, uh, section of content here available on the YouTube and on the podcast. It's known as Jungian Sexuality. Good luck getting through that and good luck not hating my guts, man or woman, after watching it. Let's just see how bad your social conditioning actually is, right? So you might want to be aware of that and also on top of that, you know, from that... Uh, dichotomous point of view right so anyway i think uh that definitely answers this question so thanks for watching and listening folks and i'll see you guys in the next episode